Wayland is one of the most important projects in the recent history of Linux, a modern and secure replacement for the old X server with the aim of being easier to develop, extend and maintain. It actually allows different applications to run at different refresh rates simultaneously. It improves fractional scaling needed for high DPI displays and enables better touch and gesture support. In theory, it should make user experience on Linux much better. But right now Wayland is a hot mess. Last fall, when Brody Robertson asked me about my thoughts on Wayland on his Tech Over T podcast, I literally had nothing to say. I mean, I tried Wayland before, but never used it extensively. And so I promised to give it a try. Over the past 8 months, I've been switching back and forth between Wayland and X11. And now I have a comprehensive list of things that are yanking my puzzle, and I'm about to spit them out. For the purpose of this video, let's make it clear that there are two distinct entities people have in mind when they say the word Wayland. Technically speaking, Wayland is the name of the display server protocol, often referred to as Wayland protocol, which is simply a piece of technology that specifies the communication between a display server and its clients. However, in casual conversations when people say Wayland, they are not talking about the protocol itself, but rather the state of things that they experience when using window managers and desktop environments on Wayland session. And that's exactly what I want to discuss today. Does that make any sense? Good. As many of you know, my main production machine is powered by an NVIDIA GPU, so I wasn't even trying to get myself on Wayland before the end of 2024. But even today, my experience is still being disrupted by countless bugs and glitches. First and foremost, after switching to Wayland, I completely lost my ability to edit videos, and I'm not kidding. Reviewing the timeline on full screen just doesn't function consistently under the Wayland session. I am a single monitor enjoyer, and so I rely on it a lot. For some reason, DaVinci Resolve on different sessions manages GPU memory differently, and on Wayland, NVIDIA users are getting bombarded with the same error, saying that the memory is full. You can easily say that this is not a Wayland problem, but rather a DaVinci Resolve problem or NVIDIA problem. But believe it or not, that's my problem. I use Linux for professional work including photo and video editing, and if some apps don't support Wayland, my experience of switching to it might not be great. But it's just a beginning. Drag and drop, a basic feature, is also missing. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to add clips into the project in DaVinci Resolve by dragging them into the timeline. Dragging images into my web browser also appears to be problematic. Some people claim that you have to drop items from the same virtual workspace, not a different one. But, as you can see, this doesn't help either. Oy, 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 oy. Of course, you can always find workarounds and import things manually via menus, but this isn't how things are supposed to be done in 2025. Another problem related to DaVinci Resolve, which also happens to me only on the Wayland session, is audio crackling. Every time I minimize Resolve or switch on the window, the audio track immediately starts getting glitchy, which has a huge impact on my productivity. Which means I can't listen to the video I'm editing while also checking my notes or reading the script. Can this be considered as a deal breaker? No, but nevertheless it's annoying as hell. And there are many little annoying bugs happening all over the Wayland session, like the Zen browser suddenly moving open tabs into a new window, Telegram displaying videos with some weird looking artifacts on top of it, and GIMP menus becoming randomly inactive from time to time, despite that it runs natively on Wayland since the release of version 3.0. None of this is happening on Xorg. I want to believe that the Wayland protocol is the future of the Linux desktop, however, right now it is being developed at such a slow pace that the things that keep annoying me right now are the same things that I had at the end of 2024, 8 months ago, 5 months ago and even 2 weeks ago. It feels like we are not going anywhere. This begs the question, are we actually ready as a community to make the transition to Wayland? Fedora once tried to strip Xorg support but ended up re-enabling it. Gnome team wanted to remove it before the release of Gnome 49, followed by Ubuntu announcement that is about to drop Xorg based sessions fully embracing Wayland as a new default for Gnome. And KD developers, well KD developers have confirmed that they are not going to drop X11 support anytime soon, which is good. 
Now, while I was making and remaking this video, the GNOME team made the decision not to disable X11 session code by default for the upcoming release. But it is still planned for removal in GNOME 50. GNOME is my favorite example since this is what I'm using on a daily basis. For some reason, in previous versions of GNOME, the layout switcher, this little icon that shows what keyboard layout you're using right now, was working only on Wayland if you switched languages via the super key plus space. If you used Alt plus Shift or any other shortcut setting the GNOME tweaks up, the layout switcher would stay the same. I mean, the keyboard layout itself would switch, but the icon, that little icon, would stay the same, which means users won't be having any clue which language they're going to type in. It was like that for months until they changed something, and after that, <laughs> I'm sorry, after that you had to press Alt plus Shift twice <laughs> to switch languages. I'm not kidding. And the cherry on top, you had to press twice to switch to the secondary layout, and only press once to switch back to the primary one. Now, unlike many other issues stated in this video, this one was fixed with the release of GNOME 48, but it persisted for months, driving me insane as I repeatedly encountered it over and over again until I rage quit back to X11. I cannot stress enough how much I was hating this. I couldn't switch between keyboard layouts efficiently, which was incredibly frustrating, I wasn't sure if I was typing my own password in the correct layout, which is a security concern, and it also gave me headaches while I was using apps with layout sensitive shortcuts, such as Reaper. And again, you can say that that's not exactly Wayland's fault, and you will be correct, but how does that make a difference? Sure, these bugs are not hardcoded in any sense into Wayland's architecture, it must be GNOME doing GNOME's thing. But imagine someone switching to Linux for the first time with no prior experience and no idea what Wayland or X11 are, or how to deal with any of those issues. Think about the user experience we create and how it affects Linux market share. Someone may say, why is he even complaining? It's Linux, it's always been like this. But no, it wasn't. It is true that Linux has always had a steep learning curve, but if you've learned the basics, you're pretty much good to go. Pick a distro, learn how to maintain it, and that's it, it just works. You know, every time I tell people in real life something like, hey, you should try Linux, it's really cool, it just works, it's because I believe it myself. I'm not a member of a cult. I switched from Windows to Linux almost 9 years ago because it was literally a better option. More stable, more robust, less annoying, and it actually allowed me to achieve much much better performance in both video editing and rendering. But on Wayland, my PC is not usable. Switching to it didn't make my life easier, instead it disrupted my creative workflow and made things worse. My desktop became buggy and unreliable, for months I wasn't actually sure what exactly I was typing because layout switcher was broken, I was unable to DM my friends on Steam and sometimes even unlock my PC. I also run a quick poll on my Telegram channel, subscribe by the way, to understand what my audience thinks about Wayland, and it turns out that more than 20% of you are still using X11 on a daily basis. And even though 70% successfully switched to Wayland, does mean that they don't experience issues at all. But to counter all that negativity, I shall say that X11 was not perfect either. It was never designed to handle many modern use cases, such as multi-monitor support, variable refresh rate, HDR and all that stuff. Other Linux YouTubers like Michael Horn and Brody Robertson, both of whom have my immense respect, had a completely different user experience switching to Wayland. Much, much better than I had, and still use Wayland daily, so not everything is dark and grim, I suppose. I'll put a link to their videos in the description. But if you've made the exact same hardware and software choices like I did, if you have an Nvidia GPU or rely heavily on Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve for video editing, you basically have no other option rather than staying on X11. At least for now. This was Reluctant Anarchist, and I have nothing left to say.